Hey guys, welcome back for another episode. My name is Kate Bowman. Today is mostly a lazy day. I'm just kind of getting some chores done around the house. Since I have some downtime, I thought I'd just hang out here in the kitchen and get some make ahead food prep done. I think it's safe to say that the holidays can be incredibly stressful, which is the exact opposite of the fun and joy that they're supposed to be. I tend to be an overachiever and a perfectionist on top of it. I often overdo and then I want it to be perfect on top of that. As we've moved towards simplifying our life over the last couple of years, I've worked really hard to change my mindset. I've learned that if my family doesn't want Christmas crazy Kate to make an appearance, I do us all a favor and make things as simple as possible. Christmas Crazy Kate gets overwhelmed and snappy. She has really bad energy. Basically, she is not the best version of me by any stretch of the imagination. Kicking her to the curb is something I have worked very hard to do. And I can say that over the last couple of years, she hasn't been seen or heard from since, which is an awesome thing for everyone. <laughs> we would have our family up during like that week, you know, before and after Christmas. I used to drive myself nuts planning special meals for every single night and a unique dessert to go with each of those meals and of course all of it was homemade I spent most of my Christmases in the kitchen being grumpy and resentful the thing that was crazy about the whole thing is you know no one was asking me to do that I was taking it upon myself and I don't do that anymore now I make things very simple I kind of have that mentality of cook once eat twice so we do stuff like lasagnas and soups and you know things that kind of stretch and if you add like a couple of like some bread to them and a nice big salad a little goes a long way I thought today would be a great day to get a couple of soups taken care of and get some cookie dough ready for the freezer before I do that I will give you an update on our bathroom so last week we had done some decorating I found that my biggest decorating dilemma was the bathroom I had picked out two shower curtains I'd picked out a dark green and a white shower curtain with some splashes of green. And overwhelmingly, you all chose the dark green. Okay, so literally, oh, but I think like two people who shared their opinion suggested the dark green. Then that lends the question of what in the heck is the white shower curtain doing on there, Kate? And that's a great question. <laughs> so for the first like two or three days, I was loving the dark green. And then every time I would come into the bathroom, it just felt stressful to me and I couldn't figure out what it was. And so I was talking to Brian about it. So we ended up putting up both of the shower curtains again. And he said, you know, I think what it is, Kate, is that our house is just mostly white with little splashes of color. And so all of a sudden now we have like this big, bold green and it just doesn't really fit. And I thought to myself, you're a genius. Yes, that's exactly what it is. So we ended up going back to this option. And then my childhood best friend suggested, you know, if you're gonna go with the white shower curtain, what about a dark green bath mat? And I was like, yes, yes again. So I will be going out on the hunt for a dark green bath mat. So that is the plan moving forward is we're gonna keep the white shower curtain, get a little pop with a green mat instead of the blue. And I think that should be good. So thank you all so much for sharing your thoughts and opinions. But I went with what felt good, like being in the space in regards to like how it felt to my body. But thank you again. So let's get on out of the bathroom and go and do some cooking together. So we are going to be making two soups today, a hamburger soup and part of a chicken noodle soup. And I will explain that in a minute. During the winter months, we eat tons of soup and stews and chilies. And so when we were trying to to decide what was staying and what was going as we were minimizing for the tiny house. There were just some things that weren't absolutely like they were staying and they're kind of big and they're kind of bulky, but to me it was worth finding a spot for them. So this spot right here is where we keep the like the bigger bulkier cooking and baking items. And so we've got a nice size soup pot that we're going to use today. And then we're also going to use the Dutch oven today. And those were things that I just absolutely, they just, they weren't going anywhere because we use them so frequently. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm gonna start with a hamburger soup. It's an Iowa Girl Eats recipe. I will link to it in the comment section below. It is super delicious, super easy, and it feeds a ton of people. So it's great for if you have to feed a crowd. I love this one because it comes together so fast and it is absolutely delicious. So it definitely looks like a lot of ingredients and sometimes that can look like a lot of work. But other than just kind of chopping up these items, I'm basically going to open these things up and pour them in and and voila. So let's get started. So this hamburger soup needs about 25 minutes to just kind of like simmer. And then I'm going to peel and chop up this potato and plop it on in there. And then it'll, I think it needs to cook for like 20 more minutes. But other than that, that's it for this soup. And so the hamburger soup actually isn't for like Christmas prep. It's for the next three days. Brian works at the hospital and he likes to like cluster his shifts together. So he works three days in a row. So this makes it really easy for me to have like really simple dinners and then when he gets home from his shift, he also can have a really simple dinner. And so we often will make a soup on the day before his shifts start. So while this hamburger soup is cooking, I think I'm gonna take a break from the soups and I'm going to move on to cookies. We have a tradition in our home that has been going on for as long as the boys have been able to watch Christmas movies. We watch all of the Christmas classics together. So from after Thanksgiving on, we used to watch one movie a weekend and we would have cookies or like white chocolate popcorn or brownies or some sort of treat to just kind of make the evening a little bit more special. But since Connor won't be home for two more weeks and then Joel's only gonna come home for four days right around Christmas, we're going to end up just watching the movies with Connor sort of probably like one a day after he gets home. And so part of the simplicity there is we're just gonna do two snacks and that will be either chocolate chip cookies or white chocolate popcorn. So I'm gonna do myself a huge favor and make the cookie dough now I'll like kind of portion it into one cookie sections and then I will freeze it and then on the nights when we decide we want to have a cookie with our movie we'll just pull some out and bake them up and it'll take just minutes all right so I am back I took a little time to kind of clean up so we can get started all over again the soup is just simmering away it looks awesome in fact it's actually probably time for the potatoes to go in so I peeled that and chopped that up real quick. So we'll just give that a stir. Oh yeah. And then we'll just kind of let that keep cooking away for a bit. So it is chocolate chip cookie time. I'm going to use Texan Aaron's air fryer chocolate chip cookie recipe. You can use dairy or you, she has a dairy free version for these cookies. I'm going to make the dairy free version. And then also she, you can make them in the air fryer or you can just make them in the regular oven. We usually make them just in the regular oven. They are absolutely yum. And this is my go-to recipe when I need a chocolate chip cookie fix. So these are our ingredients that we are going to use. Again, I am going to make a dairy-free version and so I'm going to use a refined coconut oil. If you use refined coconut oil, it will not taste like coconut. For the sake of time, because when you cook on video, it takes about 25 times longer than when you're just cooking in real life. I'm going to go ahead and get all of the ingredients weighed out so that we can get them mixed up together. All right, so everything is all mixed up and ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and quickly put this together, which is going to make having some chocolate chip cookies at the ready for whenever we need them during this holiday season, which is gonna be a great thing. Merry Christmas, baby. Rain is coming out to play. Santa Claus is packing the prey. Making sure you've been behaving okay. 
Okay, so the cookie dough is all ready. So basically what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to put the dough out on some cookie sheets and kind of smush it down a little bit. And then I'm gonna put it into the fridge for a little bit to let them firm up before I put them into the freezer. So basically in the freezer here, we do not have a lot of real estate. It is pretty darn full in here. And so I still need to be able to get some soup in here. And then this shelf right up here is for Jack's beds. He has to have some special beds because he has an extended palate and he gets very hot and when he gets very hot he pants a lot and it makes it harder for him to breathe so I'm going to need to be able to get some cookie dough in here in a plastic bag and then some chicken broth so let's see what we can do So here are the cookies. They have been scooped out and then I went ahead and smushed them down a bit. The reason why I did that is one time I did not smush them down and they ended up cooking up like a cookie ball. So that was not what I was going for. So I always just kind of give them a bit of a smush and then they cook up beautifully. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put them into the refrigerator for a little bit and just kind of let them firm up so that I can get them into the freezer a little bit more easily. All right, so there's not a ton of real estate in here. This is our apartment size refrigerator. So I'm going to put those on top of the greens and then I will put this up here with the almond milk and we'll just kind of let them sit for a while and get nice and firm and ready for the freezer. While the cookies are in firming up in the fridge, I will have to say that I was incredibly bummed when there were two scoops of cookie dough that didn't fit on the trays. So I'm going to have to cook them up. And I, you know what, let me clarify. When I had mentioned that I squished the cookie dough down, I squish the cookie dough down when I'm gonna freeze them. If I'm just going to make fresh cookies, I leave them as a ball and then they'll just kind of like flatten out the way they're supposed to just, you know, like a regular old cookie. But when I freeze them, I do not freeze them as a ball. I freeze them flat so that they can kind of like be a cookie instead of a ball. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in the oven because every good chef samples their food before they serve it to their guests. The Breville is letting me know that it is time to put the cookies in. 12 minutes. So although we have a classic regular old oven in our tiny house, we often use our Breville because our stove and oven, they use propane. We have two 30 gallon propane tanks out back between our tankless hot water heater, which also uses the propane and the oven. If we use the oven a lot, we burn through the propane very quickly. So if and when we can, we use our wonderful little Breville here to help us out. And it makes it so that between the hot water heater and then and just the stovetop cooking that we do a lot. Well, every day uh, we find that we're getting about three and a half weeks out of a tank when it's just Brian and I. So the cookies are out of the oven. I always like to put a few extra chocolate chips on top of each cookie when they come fresh out of the oven while they're still hot and easy to poke with some little chocolate chips. So I'm gonna put this down for now, even though I wanna eat it so much and I'm going to. <laughs> the plan today was to make two soups and the cookies, but my battery is blinking at me, so it's gonna die soon. So I will come back tomorrow and we will do the beginnings of the chicken noodle soup, but I feel really good about today. We've got the cookies ready to go for movie night and this beef soup looks amazing. So this soup right here is going to be my dinner tonight and Brian's dinner tonight and probably either my lunch or dinner tomorrow night too. But it's super delicious, very easy to make. Iowa Girl Eats, she's got some great recipes. So I will come back here tomorrow and we will finish up and I will sample this cookie. Oh man, Texan Erin, you're the bomb diggity. I will also link to her recipe, of course. So I will see you tomorrow.
welcome back. Today the sun is peeking in and out of the clouds and it's a touch chilly outside. So it's the perfect day for eating soup and for making this next soup. So I'm going to partially make this soup today. I'm going to freeze this soup for one of those inevitable hectic days where you just need to come home and heat something up and have something nutritious and delicious to eat. This is another Iowa Girl Eats recipe. Her website is all about gluten-free foods and gluten-free eating because she has celiac disease, but I love her recipes and I just use wheat products in place of the gluten-free suggestions that she provides. So this chicken soup recipe that we're going to make has minimal ingredients and it is so good and it just comes together so quickly. It's a win-win-win. So I'm going to do one thing different than Kristen. In her recipe she will call, she calls for one chicken breast, but I'm just going to plunk both of these in there because I've got them. And it just makes the soup like even heartier. Why not, right? And another thing that I think makes this recipe out of this world is I use Imagine brand chicken broth. It is literally the best chicken broth that I have ever tasted. I haven't found anything that's even close to it yet. And then also since I'm going to be freezing this recipe, I am not going to add the pasta. So basically the plan is, is that I'm going to make up the broth today and, you know, add the chicken and, and do all of those delicious good things that's going to make the broth taste really good. And then I'm going to freeze the broth. And then on one of those hectic days where I know that dinner is going to turn into a zoo, I'm going to go ahead and take the, the broth out of the freezer, kind of let it thaw. And then that evening while it's heating up on the stove, I'm going to add the pasta. I really love these little bow ties. They're minis. And I love them because I feel like they kind of keep their texture. So they're nice and like they have like a little bit of chewiness to them and they're not like all just like mushy. So this is my go-to. So let's go ahead and get started because I am telling you, this is literally the easiest chicken noodle soup you have ever made, but it is also absolutely delicious. And since I'm going to just plunk the chicken breasts right on into the pot without cutting them or anything, I'm going to show you this really simple trick that I use to get it all shredded up. I'm sure you've all seen it before online. It's, it speeds things up really quickly and it gives nice shredded pieces of chicken. Walking around, feeling free, thinking about what's happened to me from July up till now. Don't know where. So the broth has had a chance to cook the chicken up and I have had a chance to put the chicken into this bowl. It's very hot. I found this chicken shredding trick online. I don't even remember where. Basically, I'm gonna use this bad boy. It's easy peasy. I feel like it saves time. It's much faster than trying to pull it apart with the forks. That just never works very well for me, but this thing happens pretty quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And so that was pretty much it. You literally put the pieces of chicken in there, you turn on the beaters and voila. You just obviously wanna be very careful. In this case, the chicken was super hot and you know, don't burn yourself. So basically I am going to put this back in to the pot. I'm going to let the soup cool down completely and then I'm going to put it into the freezer for one of those days when it's just crazy. And I could see myself serving this with either would we would have grilled cheese or some warm bread and with either option. It's totally a salad, always a salad, but once again, super simple, comes together really quickly, and the taste is mm, so good. And of course, I will link to the recipe in the comment section. All right, so the chicken broth at this point is completely taken care of. It's just missing the noodles, which I will put in right before we eat it. But I realized that I totally forgot to show you what I ended up doing with the cookie dough, just so you kind of have an idea if this is something you wanted to do at your home. So let's take a look. All right, so here's our freezer again. This is an apartment size fridge, fridge, so we don't have a ton of space, but so basically what I ended up doing here, you know what, I'm gonna take these out of the freezer, hold on. Okay, so the bag is getting a little like 
cloudy on me because I just took it out of the freezer. But so basically what I did is I put one layer of cookies on the bottom and then I put a piece of parchment paper on top and then I laid the rest of the cookies down so they don't get all, you know, stuck together and, and it just makes it super easy. And you can see that they're, they're very malleable and easy to get ready for the oven. So this right here is one of the smushed frozen cookie doughs, which is ready for the oven. I feel very duty bound yet again to, you know, just try one and make sure that the frozen cookie is just as delicious as the fresh dough cookie. So I'm going to wait for Mr. Breville here to heat up and then I'll let you know how it goes. I take my job very seriously. So let's go ahead and wrap up this video. I can't pretend that my hair day has been anything but an atrocious hair day. So, okay hair, you win. Ponytail, a ponytail it is. But anyway, I can say that the cookies look just as good on day two as they did yesterday. And I can assure you that I am highly looking forward to eating this cookie <laughs> right on up. I feel so relieved that I have a couple of to-dos crossed off of the list. Making things ahead now while I have a little extra time is gonna pay off big time during those times when I don't. As the days pass by, it is only going to get more and more hectic. The soups that we made over the last two days are absolutely delicious and they are so simple to make. Whether you're saving them for later by freezing them or you just eat them the day that you make them, they are an easy way to put something super delicious on your dinner table. I am definitely looking forward to the chocolate chip cookies. They always taste better when you're eating them with the people that you love. I'm looking forward to evenings of snuggling up on the couch as we watch our most favorite Christmas movies. I personally am looking forward to A Christmas Story. It is not Christmas in my mind without Ralphie and you'll shoot your eye out. Do you have a favorite holiday movie or a favorite holiday tradition where it just doesn't feel like the holidays without it? I hope you'll tell me about it in the comments section. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and join me on the journey to living more simply. Until next time, bye!